Amen. Praise God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, give him some praise. Amen. You can do better than that. Come on, come on, come on. Praise God. Amen. Just let me, let me hear you say forward. Forward. Amen. Now do me a favor. When you, when you get to that point where you say forward and you believe it, like you believe that God's going to move you forward in every area of your life, in your relationships, in your finances, in your personal fitness, I want you to say forward. And when you believe it and you believe that God is only going to take you forward, I just want you to just stand and give him some praise and say forward. Amen. When you ready, when you ready. Yeah, when you ready. Yeah, when you ready. Yeah, when you ready. Come on, when you ready, come on. Forward, come on. And I, do me a favor, I want you to, in your mind, I want you to see yourself forward. And I want you to say it. Like I want you to envision you not being where you are presently, but you're being where God would have you to be. And I want you to say forward. Come on, come on, forward. Hallelujah, come on, forward. So, so look, I have a job to do in 2024. I have a job to do. As your spiritual coach, I have a job to do. And that job is to put you in a position where you get more in 24. Now, here's what you have to understand, that we don't serve a God of lack. I need you to hear what I'm telling you. You do not serve a God of lack. So you will only get what you can believe for, not what he's capable of. Come on, I want to say it again. I want to make sure we clear. You can do a life spree. You know what they talk about, shopping spree? You can just do a whole life spree with God. Listen to me very closely. You will never be able to exhaust his capacity for you. You'll never be able to exhaust his capacity for you. It's scriptural. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart. God's. Listen to me very closely. So I got to make sure we're clear. Whatever you get in 2024, it would only be because you move forward. Come on, come on, I'm talking to somebody. Uh, have a seat, have a seat. We're going to teach real quick. We're going to teach real quick. We're going to teach. Listen to me very closely. We only have what we currently have because of who we are currently. And every single thing that God has for us will require us to move forward. In our mindset, in our spirit, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Listen to me very close. I want to make sure we're clear before I teach. Because if I teach and you're not ready, it's going to be entertainment. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to say some stuff. <laughs> and because God is going to say it through me, it's going to be dope. I'm just being real. It's going to be dope because God is saying it through me. What I'm trying to tell you, though, is that if you don't go forward, it's just going to be entertainment. But if you move forward right now, here's the other thing you have to understand. If God wants you to move forward, meaning you're not yet where he wants you to be, then somebody wants you to go in reverse. Like it's, while it's God's job to help you go forward, it's somebody's job to make you go backwards. I'm just being real. That's the devil's job. And so you got to do me a huge favor. No distractions right now. No distractions. And I want you to get rid of the distractions in your life when they come like, don't even fool with them because the distractions are designed to take you your old habits, the old you. That's what the, that's what distractions want to do. Distractions want you to go like, man, forget that. You might as well just because you're familiar with. But I need you to concentrate on no matter what happens. It's always forward. Does that make sense? Come on. Talk back to me. Does that make sense? Who ready to go forward? Come on. Let me see who ready to go forward. Come on, for real, who ready to go forward? You ready to go forward? I'm just being real. I stayed in the hotel the last time I was here. I ain't even know nothing about it. My man at the desk was like, E, you come here a lot. The presidential suite is available. You want to, I was like, yeah. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Of course I want the presidential suite. You know what I'm saying? Then Didi was looking like, how much is that? I was like, I don't care how much it is. I want to go forward. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't tripping on no price. I just want to go forward. I'm just being real. I ain't tripping on no price. 
Like, what we saving it for? Jalen, he going, what you think Jalen going to do with the money? <laughs> he about to spend it on the presidential suite. <laughs> I'm just being real. I already know what he going to do. I, so I, I said, absolutely, I want the presidential suite. No questions asked. I went in that joke and was like, yep, I ain't never going back to the one bed. <laughs> I, I ain't never going back to that other boy. <laughs> it ain't nothing wrong with the other one. I'm not, I'm not going back to that room. I want this room right here. I don't care if I stay a day. I don't care if I stay a couple of hours. This is where I want to be. My mind saw it. Like this shower better. <laughs> My eyes like it better. Are you hear what I'm saying? The space. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with the other one, but like I can do this and, and we can... The other one, it's like, <laughs> my body like that room. I'm like, Jose, bro, I love you to life. I know you got to send all the camera crew here, bro, but you got to see this room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Jose was like, can't do it. We got to come to the church. I like, bet. I show him the room. He was like, no, we're going we gonna to do the podcast there. I was like, anybody ready to go forward? Anybody ready to go forward? Anybody got some behaviors you know? that you like, yep, I should, these ain't even going to help me go where I'm trying to get to. And you want to get rid of, you just want to go this, anybody want to go forward? <laughs> Natara here, I don't even know if Natara, Natara called me and she had an emergency and I was like, girl, stop, stop. She called me with emergency. Stop. I, she, and I, I said, do you know that happened for a fact? No, but normally when I said, you bet, stop. You just created the worst scenario in the world and you don't have no evidence for it. You just called me with the worst thing that could happen. Don't, I said, don't do that. We don't got to get to that until that happened. Do you know for a fact? No, nope, I don't know for a fact. I said, don't say that then. We're going to pray. We're going to make some phone calls. Don't do that. The devil didn't put you in the worst mental place you could possibly be. That's the worst place you could be. Don't do that. Then she called me back. I don't know. Natar, was it 24 hours late, 48 hours later? And she was like, oh, no, it did happen. I said, praise God. We just made something up. I'm, if you're not careful, your spirit will take you to the wrong, take you back to make you think something, how you act, and then you're going to respond based on what you, I said, you better stop. You better stop. I don't care, like from now on, if you don't get a call from somebody, you don't know what's going on, you're going to think best case scenario. They didn't call me, they just won the lottery. They don't know how to call it and tell me they won the lottery. They got, they got to split half with me, they don't even know how to say it. I'm just saying, what, listen to me, Magic Johnson changed my, now first of all, I'm from Michigan. First of all, I went to Michigan State. So when Magic say something, period, you know what I'm saying, as a Spartan, you kind of just like, what'd he say? But when Magic said, it doesn't take any more to be a billionaire than a millionaire, that's Magic, Magic from Lansing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Magic went to Everett, like he from Lansing, Michigan. Magic said, who, a person who got money, he said, it don't take no more effort to be a millionaire than a billionaire, and today he a billionaire because he said, I don't have to be nobody, he said, it's actually easier to be a billionaire than a millionaire. And so I want, you to, I want you to understand, it is as easy to think something positive as it is. Your, your brain don't have to do nothing different. It's just programmed to think negative. We've been programmed to think worst case scenario. We've been programmed to think negative. Without any evidence, the devil will have you on some. And then why does he do that? Because if you can think that way, then your behavior has to take you that way. And if your behavior takes you that way, then you got to get the outcomes. And I told you before, the devil know he lost, so he wants you to lose too. He already know he lost. He wants you to be a loser too. So forward. Okay, y'all gonna catch it one of these months. Four words. Four words. All right, now before I get in my message, I just want to share a tip. Can I share a forward tip? Can I share a tip that you're going to need to help you to go forward? Now, you don't mind if I got it from Shay Shay Club, do you? I just, can I just think? I'm just saying, I don't even watch it, but it's been all on my feed. I just, I ain't even never watched one podcast and Shay Shay Club, just all in my stuff. Matter of fact, I don't even know Shannon Sharp like that. I know Sterling Sharp. See, I'm from Detroit, so they show the Lions game. That's in the national, we not in the American League. So my whole life, I ain't even watched AFC games. They don't even really show them on TV like that. They show NFC. So I know Sterling because he played with the Green Bay Packers and they played us twice a year. And because he's so like dope, 
that he going to score and they going to interview him after they beat us. So my whole life, I've been dealing with Sterling. You know what I'm saying? My whole life. I didn't even really know Shannon Sharp like that because he on the AFC. He on that side. Broncos. He on that side. Ravens. He ain't on our side, right? So I might see him in the playoffs or the Super Bowl, but I like, I didn't grow up watching him. So I didn't really even know who he was until the podcast got, you know, they just, podcast just dope. He on the podcast. So there's two in particular, right? The first one I got, I, I got to share it because this is a principle that you need. I got it from Shay Shay Club, believe it or not. So the first one that went viral was who? Cat. Cat. And then just recently, who went viral? Monique. Monique. So I got to share it with you. I'm like, I get it now. It makes sense. Like when Kat did it, I was like, ah, I don't know. When she did it, I was like, ah, I see exactly what they own. I see how he hit 50 mil, how she hit almost six mil right off the, I was like, got it. So I want to share with you because it's a forward, like they've been crying out and we didn't hear them. We thought it was on some gossip, on some mess. But what they were actually saying is they keeping us from going forwards. That's what they've been on. They, we, we, you wouldn't hear them, though, because you heard the gossip part, and they was calling people out, and you was upset, like, I can't believe she, I can't believe he, I can't believe she, or you was like, yeah, they right. But, but what they were challenged with is forward. So when I was reading the Bible, God was like, yo, this is Joseph's story. This is Joseph right here, right? So what you have to understand is Cat Williams is super talented. Monique, talented. The Parkers, we saw on the Parkers, she was, they, they had that one-two, her the door, yeah, they had that one-two combination. They was strong with it. Then when she did Precious, it was like, yep, she, she the real deal, feel. But what she was saying was, I'm talented. Kat said, I'm talented, but I'm not where I want to be with the talent that I have. Anybody in the room feel like you dope, you talent, you ain't far as you supposed to be? Anybody in the room, you feel like that? <laughs> So I got some, I got a forward print. It's not the word, but God brought it to me and I, I got a new thing I'm doing. I'm not even going to change the slides. I'm just going to do it without slides. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it disrupts them. Amen. But God don't always give me my message on Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he give me stuff on the way. So I was on the plane and he gave me this. So I don't even want to mess up the slides. Okay. So I'm just going to give it to you separately and you got to go study it on your own. In the book of Genesis, 37.5, we meet Joseph at 17. Super talented dude, super talented. But he do a 10 bid, maybe not 10, maybe less. I don't know, but I know he got sold into slavery at 17. He worked for Potter for about two, three years, then he got sent to jail. So he did at least 10 years, eight years, seven years, he did a bid. So now you're talking about somebody super talented. I know he's talented because everything he touched. When he was in my man Potiphar's crib, everything was blessed. He said, bruh, you so blessed, you can have everything but my wife, and she wants you too. That's why he said it, because he was like, I know she wants you too. Like, everything you touch is dope. She, she, she see it, because I'm gone. She at the crib. She see what happens since you've been here. Oh, can, I, can we tell the truth? She watching Joseph like, yo, my husband touched this stuff, and it didn't do that. This man had touched this, and my whole house is blessed. He got folks working in a way they never worked before. All our stuff is growing, our investments, our money. Look, the boy was bad. Potiphar was like, do me a favor. You can just have everything. <laughs> the reason why he said it, because he knew he could have had her too. I'm just, come on, y'all. Can we keep it 1,000? A man ain't going to tell you something that you already, you know what I'm saying? He like, bro, do me a favor. All of this is yours. He didn't have to tell Joseph that. Joseph already knew everything he touched was. Joseph already knew that he was there. That was the reason why. So what he was saying was, without, you know, his pride getting in the way, he told him something that he already knew. Everything is yours. He already was his anyway. He went home enough for it to be his. And when he was at home, it didn't look like that. So he said, you, you own everything in my house. Can I keep her? <laughs> and she was like, I don't know what little, you know, little trade off you make it, but I want him too. <laughs> Joseph was blessed, but he was limited. As blessed as he was, he should have been a lot further in his life. But he went to jail and as dope as he was in jail, he couldn't get himself out. I want to pray for you because I see, I see, 
A lot of people, you're not in the zone, you're not in the spirit, so you watching stuff. I'm seeing Cat now. I see exactly what Cat was on. Cat was like, yo, I know I'm way more talented than my man. How my man get there and I ain't there? She like, yo, I know I'm fun, and she funny, <laughs> and she, she witty. She like, it ain't no, I wanna, most of y'all ain't even won one of these. I won one and I'm still not where I wanna be. So I want you to do this in your prayers for me every day in your prayers. I want you to ask God for your own special personal butler, somebody to open up doors for you. Joseph would still be in jail right now if homie had, and I'm going to be real with you, both of them, the baker and the butler, both of them forgot about him. Both of them was like, bro, I got your back. When, he, when they was in jail and he was looking out for them, they was like, bro, I got your back. As soon as they left prison, they was like, let me do your, let me give you number two. Sign the contract before they blow up. Because once they blow up, they're going to forget about you. I'm just being real. It's over. <laughs> once they start making that paper and they life change, they're going to forget about you. Make them say yes before they <laughs> blow up. Because once they blow up, they didn't forgot everything you, you did what? bro? how you forget? <laughs> I'm just saying. You, you, you watch C. C just be saying, y'all think C be playing. C don't be playing. He be reminded. Told him I'm your daddy. He'll be playing. I want to remind you. <laughs> before you blew up, I was the one that was... Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't, don't forget. Because I'm just being real. You will blow people up and they'll act like they don't know what you did for them. <laughs> so you got to make sure on the front end, you sign the deal before they get too big because once they get too big, it's over. The ego. So here is Joseph, the most spiritual dude on the planet. When Pharaoh met him, Pharaoh said, who is this man? That the spirit of God is him. He didn't say he had the spirit of God. He said the spirit of God, he made the spirit of God in him one. There was nobody as intelligent as he was, but yet he was in prison. I understand cat now. I understand when they, I see what they were saying. We, we, we talented, we gifted, but we, the gatekeepers. That's what they were saying, as gifted and talented as we are, we still can't make moves the way we want to make moves because they're gatekeepers. Pray that you have a personal relationship with at least one gatekeeper because it doesn't matter how talented and gifted you are. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are. If you don't have a butler who remembers you. My man was like, hold up, hold up, hold up, Pharaoh. Chill out for a minute. Chill out, hold up. I remember somebody. Yeah, my man Joseph. Hey, get Joseph a spot. Give him a shot. I guarantee you he could do that. Now, what I love about Joseph was, even though he was in jail, he wasn't desperate. That's some of y'all problem. Even when you get the shot, you so desperate. Joseph wasn't even desperate. Joseph was like, he was good in jail. <laughs> Joseph didn't even tell my man I can answer a dream. Matter of fact, Joseph told him like, bro, I'm going to be real with you. I don't know what your little dream was and I can't answer it. That's on God. Joseph didn't even come in and act like he could do it. Joseph was like, bro, I'm sorry, I can't. But if you tell me the dream, I can talk to God and maybe he could tell me the interpretation of it. In the name of Jesus, you're working hard and that's not what you need to do. You need to be recognized by the right person who's gonna elevate you. That's your prayer. You ain't gotta be no doper. You've been trying to be doper. You don't have to be any doper, that's not the problem. The problem is you need somebody to discover you and somebody to put you on. Hey man, so what I want you to do for me every day is ask the prayer, God show me my butler. Not the baker, because the baker forgot about my man, he never remembered him again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, you don't want the baker. You know what I'm saying, my man ain't remember, man, you want the butler. We're gonna move forward, and one of the ways to move forward is you can't have a bunch of people in your life who hate you. You can't move forward like that. You can't move forward when everybody in your space is bitter. You can't move, you can't move forward like that. You got to move forward. You got to have some optimistic people in your life. You got to have people in your life that are trying to elevate you. Like they, they not trying to get elevated and they elevate you after they get elevated. Like their job is to elevate. Does that make sense? And you praying the wrong thing. You want to stay in relationship because you're in relationship. No, you need to get around some people who going to look at you and go, you dope. And I want to help you get to where you're supposed to be. You dope. And you can't get there on your own. Does that make sense? No, I, I want y'all to hear this now, because it don't mean the people in your life bad people. That's not what that means. They're great people. But you got to have somebody in your life who's saying, I'm going to make your goals my responsibility. I would never be here today if I was just working the way I was working before. I wasn't doing nothing wrong. I was in church and school. I was doing my thing. I tried 200 grand now, because he said, I'm going to make you a household name. 
He never said, I'm going to make you a better speaker. He said, I'm going to take your idea, what you're trying to do, and I'm going to make it like for 40 hours a day, 50 hours a day. I'm going to make it my concern. That's what you're missing. You got to stop. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got to stop working harder. You don't need to work any harder. Joseph didn't need to be no more spiritual. He didn't need no more integrity. He didn't need to become a better person. He just needed somebody to have his back. As he was. So that's what you're missing. Come on, anybody, you relate to what I'm talking about right now? Let me just see your hand. You relate to what I'm talking about. So your forward is not you working harder. Your forward is God. Bring that person in my life that's going to make my concerns their concerns. Do you see what I'm saying? Ruth said you need somebody with the spirit of Ruth. Ruth wasn't on her own plan. Ruth said, and your God shall be my God, and your people shall be my people, and where they bury you, bury me. Or curse me. You need a Ruth. That's your problem. You ain't got nobody that's got your back like that. You ain't got nobody that's looking out for you like that. That's your prayer. 2024, I need a root in my life. I need somebody that's going to tell me, go stay at home while I go out and pick stuff for you. I'm not even for herself. Ruth went out and gleaned for her. Naomi, she, Ruth wasn't even getting it for Ruth. And in the process of Ruth looking out for... Don't let nobody fool you. You look out for people and watch what happened to you. Ruth was looking for a man without looking for a man. And when Ruth gave up herself and her self-identity for Naomi, not only did she bless Naomi, she got everything she wanted. She got a man some money. <laughs> you just need a root. You just need a butler. You just need somebody to open up the door for you. So you start working that hard. You're doing too much. You stop praying like the Lord has forsaken you. You're doing too much. You're not asking for the right thing. Now you want your butler. You want your Ruth. And I know what it's like to have those in my life. God has placed those people in my life. And as a result of it, I'm not here because of Eric Thomas. I'm here because of DDs. I'm here because of CJs. And that's what you're missing. You've been fighting your whole life. <laughs> You've been fighting your whole life and you ain't got nobody else fighting for you. And that's your prayer. And you're going to wait on God. Who's ready to go forward? Come on. Am I talking to anybody? Who's ready to go forward? Who's ready to go forward? So listen to me. Somebody in this room, I'm about to hurt you. Well, CJ hurt your feelings. I'm just repeating what he said. So I'm going to put it on CJ. It's easier that way. Some of you are supposed to be the Ruth, but you're trying to be Joseph. You're supposed to be the butler. Some of you supposed to be the butler. You're trying to be Joseph, and that's why it's not working out. So humble yourself and get in your role, and don't let nobody fool you into thinking that when you go. Can I tell you something? When you the butler, trust me when I tell you Joseph was put in charge of all of Egypt. If you the person that put him in that, you, you like two, too. <laughs> You two, too, because you, you're the one you got to two is the one that's looking out for you. Is that all right? Come on, is that all right? Forward. 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 Don't let this world distract you, and don't you be doing this world stuff. Pay attention to what God is doing through me. Don't just watch what I got. Listen to what I'm telling you. One of the scriptures that I live by, when I'm seeing all this stuff online, envy not thy oppressor and choose none of his ways. I ain't envying what other people are doing, and I'm not choosing their ways. I'm doing what God called me to do. I'm staying focused on what God, oh, you missed what I just said. Some of you, your problem is you seeing what other people do, and you trying to do what they do. I'm like, praise God for you. Amen. Praise God. Some of my, my mentee, I, I trap. praise God. He all over the world, praise God. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested at right now on doing a world tour. I just want to get up and get on the call and bless my people and get back to the rest of my life. I'm not interested in traveling the world no more. I did that before the internet. You missed what I just said. <laughs> a whole bunch of y'all in here know I was at y'all church doing week of prayers, four week revivals. It just wasn't recorded. It don't mean I didn't do it because it wasn't online and I don't got to redo it so the people in this generation can see it. I did it already. 
Praise God, we was all over the world. Miami at 18, 19 years old. I was the one, we could prayers, y'all was preaching in church. I was in the hood, the basketball games, preaching at, at intermission. We've been there, done that, it just wasn't televised. But it don't mean it, don't, it didn't happen because it wasn't televised. And for some of you, God has asked you to do something and you don't want to do it because it's not going to be televised. You don't want to do it because it's like, well, God, it's not going to be televised. I want everybody else to see it. Isn't it enough that God sees it and God is taking record? Isn't that enough? All right, let's get to as much of the word as we can get to. I'm sorry. Let's go to the first slide. God always, wow. God has always and always will promote and endorse forward motion. It's scriptural. Let me take you to the word real quick. Philippians 3, 13 and 14, our familiar one. Brothers and sisters, I do not count myself to yet have taken hold of it. I, that, and none of us in this room perfect. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, and I strain, meaning it's going to take work toward what is ahead. There is nothing beneficial behind you. Everything God has for you is, is forward. And you got to stop getting distracted. You got to stop waking up, talking about it. Discipline yourself. That's why I'm doing more in 24 for 30 days because it takes 21, but for most of us, it probably take 30, right? 21, you, you, you an A student. At 30, you like ET. It's going to take you an extra nine, an extra week and a couple days to actually get it, right? And so I need you to do me a favor. Like, whatever happened yesterday, stop dwelling on it. I said yesterday, God promotes forward. God said, do me a favor. I'm going to give you a manna, and I know it's going to be good. But do me a favor, manna on Monday don't last to Tuesday. So don't try to eat Monday's manna on Tuesday. Don't do that. Why? Because I'm God, and I want to do something fresh. Don't you think God could have created manna that expired in a week? You know how much more work it requires to do it daily, if not in heaven on earth? They got to gather it every day. He said, do me a favor. I'm giving it to you every day. Why? Because I don't want y'all in the past. I don't want y'all eating leftovers. I'm going to make it fresh every day. Now, I am going, on Friday, though, we're going to double it up for Sabbath. I want y'all to rest on Sabbath day. I don't want y'all gathering. I want y'all to take one day off. But six days, I'm going to give you fresh. I want you to get fresh. God wants you to get fresh memories. You still holding on to the past. You're still holding on to good. You were worshiping great. You didn't turn that house into, like, your whole identity. Look at what I, that's, God want to do a new thing. All right, so watch this. He said, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Luke 9 and 62. Jesus replied, who? Jesus. Okay, who? Jesus. Oh, you did better with forward. Who? Jesus. Watch what he says. No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back. This Jesus talking. He said it's fit for service in the kingdom of God. Like you can't even be down with me on some plot looking back. The plow's supposed to be going forward. You got the plow, you looking back. Jesus went on to say this. He made it so dope. My man said, God, I want to go with you, forward with you, but I got to go bury my father. He said, let the dead bury the dead. What? We on our way here. You going back to bury somebody? They already dead. Who you going to bury? <laughs> they dead already. Come on with me. If Jesus said, you would think Jesus would be like, all right, I'm going to give you two days. Go bury your loved one. Come on back. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lift up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marked, marched after them. After years of slavery, they finally free. And they were so afraid. Some of you are afraid of going forward. That's why you can't go. You're scared of forward. You've been, you've been in that other state for so long. You've been out of the will of God for so long. You've not been your authentic self for so long that, you, like, like, that now you're starting to be afraid of what God has for you. You were afraid of the freedom now. You were afraid of the success. You were afraid of the next level. You've been at this thing for so, you, you. And the children of Israel, they have been, they have been, forgive me for saying this word, but they have been backwards for so long that they cried out to the Lord to stay there. 
You mean to tell me you got a chance to directly communicate to God and the thing you tell him is, I want to stay in slavery. Help. <laughs> Help me, God. Whatever you do, don't take me forward. I want to stay backwards, please. You're talking to the creator of all things, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And you, he said, make your request known unto me. And the request you make is, God, do us a favor. We want to stay in slavery. And they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? This is how we talk about forward because it's not familiar to us, because we've not seen it before, because God has seen it for us, but we haven't seen it for ourselves because we haven't been our authentic self for so long. We're trying to please people and be what people want us to be. We've been in debt so long. We've been in broken so long. We've been in toxic relationships so long that God has showed you what a good relationship looked like and you scared. I don't want that. He's going to take care of me. I don't want that. He's not going to beat me upside my head. He's not going to talk down to me. I don't want that. I don't want financial freedom. I don't want to know what it's like not to be in pain. I, I don't want to, I want to live from check to check. Jesus, help me to live from check to check. I love the sound of hearing that car that's the truck that's coming to take my car that's got me up in the middle of the night. Every time I hear something, they about to tow my, I like that sound. <laughs> uh, you laughing, this is what they said, Moses. Moses, they're on their way to victory. They're on their way to the freedom land. Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us to die in the wilderness? Wherefore has thou dealt with us? Like, why have you done this to us? Why have you taken us from slavery? <laughs> we had three square meals. What have you done? We were slaves and our children were guaranteed a job. They were slaves too. <laughs> they fed us barely, but they fed us. It was guaranteed. We lived in, we lived uh, under the poverty line, but we knew how we would live. Moses, what are you doing taking us away from this? To carry us forth out of <laughs> Egypt to the promised land? What are you doing? Why would you take us to the promised land? Is not this the word that we did tell us in Egypt saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? They ain't even serving God no more so bad. For had it been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness? Back was have ignorance, just ignorance. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians who you have seen today, you shall never see them again forevermore. You will not, when God gets finished with us, we will never see reverse. We will never see that again. You will never see your slave master again. You will never be a slave again. You will never eat that food again. Your children will never be subjected to that again. I, I didn't say 10 years, 20 years. I said forever. And I ain't saying it's right. It's probably not right. But when you hear Jewish people talk about, watch what they say. <laughs> Listen to the word that they use. <laughs> Listen to the words that they use when they feel like the Holocaust ain't being represented. When they think they people are being abused, they say, and this will never. Listen to the words that they say. They say collectively as a body, not separate. They say collectively, this will, we will never, as a Jewish people, we will never experience that again. I don't care what the UN talking about. I don't care what sanctions y'all talking about. There will never be another Holocaust. We will never be the bottom again. Where they get that language from? Where they get that language from? They got it from the word. They got it. They're the Israelites. They got it from the word. And Moses said, not only will I, he, he said, fear not, stand still. Not only did he say, see the salvation of the Lord, which God's going to show you today, right now. But he put a period on it when he said, 
and the Egyptians who you see today, you shall never see them again forevermore. I'm telling you right now, you can walk out of here and you can never see backwards ever again if you want to. You don't never have to see it again. And if you see it again, it's because you picked it up. We serve God that ain't, he can't stand, can't stand reverse. You're the only one like it. You're the only one settled in it. Let's go. I want to show you something. We're about to get out of here. I want to help you. This is the last part. I want to help you. So, so the only way you can get out of reverse is that you have to, you have to do the soul work. The soul has no secret that the behavior does not reveal. This is why you got to do the soul work. You do any other work, it's not going to heal it. The soul will tell on us. I don't care what you say with your mouth. The soul going to tell on you. Your soul, your character tells on you. You can say, oh, no, I thought I believe you. No, you don't. I can tell you, your soul telling on you. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. You don't have faith. We can do it. I always know that any sports fans, any sports fans, I can always tell. I can always tell when the momentum shift and your team is going to respond to the momentum, or I can tell when there's a momentum shift and your team about to lose. Whenever, whenever you killing them and then it, the score is even, when you see the teams that you just watch Kobe. When you watch Kobe, listen to me, this thing is so crazy, y'all. The soul, it tell on you. The soul so deep that the Lakers down by 20 and Kobe is looking at Phil Jackson and Kobe is saying to coach, looking at coach, coach, whatever you do, don't call a timeout. Don't do that, coach, because if you call a timeout, the team going to feel like we... You can see him and Phil getting into it. Phil as a coach, feel like, yo, y'all boys that went down 20, we got to regroup. You can see Kobe looking at Phil like, Phil, don't do it. Don't do it because if we take a timeout, it's going to look like they're they going to feel like they got us. They're going to feel like they be, we had to call a timeout. Coach, don't do it. Co coach, look. And you see Phil look at him like, well, then you better do something. And then you see Kobe turn it on. You see 20 go to 18, 18 go to 14. You see 14 go to 10. You see 14 go to 10, 10 go to five. Then all of a sudden it's a tie ball game. And the whole time, I knew the Lakers was gonna come back because the whole time, Kobe Soul said, I got it, that it's okay. We down by 20, but we gonna be all right. I can turn this ship around. But I saw it, I saw it the other day in the playoffs. I saw it, it was a bunch of great players, but they was rookies. They had never been there. They had never been to an NFC championship. I saw their body language in the first half. I saw it when it got tied, and I saw people drop their head. I said, game over, you didn't drop your head, bruh. You drop your head, bruh. You drop your head, bruh. You looking at the score now, you drop your head. You letting the score to take your, the, the score is dictating your behavior. Kobe ain't, Mike, Michael Jordan ain't never, Mike ain't never, you, Mike, bah. I don't care what the score is, I don't care, bah. I'm set, I wanna make sure y'all understand. I don't know who y'all are, but y'all need to know who I, the soul tells on you. The soul tells. And so the only way we're not gonna go in reverse, because the devil knows who you are, he knows us, and he knows which buttons to push. The only way the devil cannot push a button is that it has to be fixed with the soul, meaning it has to be deeply fixed, deeply rooted addressed. It has to be taken out completely, or he gonna keep pushing the button. I don't care how many texts you read. You read the Bible as much as you want to. You can go to church as much as you want to. You do all that foolishness if you want to. I, let me show you these pictures real quick. I want to show you this. I want to show you these pictures real quick. Work out if you must, if you will. I want you to work out. I want you to be healthy. But I want you to understand that in this state, you're no match for the devil. I don't, be around. I don't care how much water you drink. I don't care what your, your, your vitals are. <laughs> I don't care what your lab work say. I don't care how many muscles. I don't care if you have zero body fat. As a fleshly human, you are no match for the spirit. The devil is not, he not flesh. Are you telling me don't get to this state? Get to it. But I'm telling you, don't, get, don't make this the priority. Make the soul the priority and work everything through the soul. Work everything through the soul because you're not about to listen to me. Have you not word the word? You read the word in Acts? He said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And they said, the demon said, what? What? In the name of who? Peter, we know. Paul, we know. Not Jesus. We know Peter. Soul work. 
He denied Christ. He had to get it together. We know Paul. Paul was killing God's people. He had to get his soul right. Peter we know. Paul we know. Who are you? And they jumped on him. I'm not telling you, please. I'm not telling you don't get money. You need, you gonna, you gonna, we live in capitalism. You're going to need some money. But I promise you, you're no match for the devil. Matter of fact, he'll give you this. He'll give you this to leave him alone. He'll give you this not to be in your purpose, not to be in your calling. He'll give you this not to be who God destined you to be. He'll give you this to quit and give up. He'll give you this. He'll give you a whole bunch of this. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with money. Get as much as you want, but do the soul work. Do the soul work because if you do the soul work, you don't have to prove to people you change. When you do the soul work, God knows you change and he'll change everything around you. Every, wherever you put your foot. Do the type of work that whatever you touch, it's anointed. Somebody hit me, was like, I don't, I don't even know where they are right now. Somebody text me, it is packed in here. We're doing soul work. Why wouldn't it be? We're doing soul work. And you can't get soul work all over the world. In a world where they told you God is first and God we trust, you can't. I'm not telling you not to come to church, but you can come to church and still not do soul work. You can come to church and still be religious and not do the soul work. CJ said on the podcast that's coming out, he, I almost choked him out. He said, if you are a father and you're not taking care of your son, don't call me and tell me you want to hang out with me. You ain't take care of your own son. How can I trust that you're going to take care of me? You ain't taking care of your own blood. You're trying to bypass the soul work, being a father and being responsible. And you're trying to hang out with me. I'm already knowing what you're going to do to me. I saw what you did to your son. Please, as you will, as you must, go get educated. I ain't even saying degrees. If you can get them, cool. But I'm saying go get educated. Whatever your little entrepreneurship journey is, know as much as you could possibly know in that. Be a guru in it. But the devil ain't about to be upset because you, uh, you're a financial wizard. <laughs> you ain't about to punk the devil because you got an 850 credit score. You're not about to punk the devil. You're not about to move Satan. I'm just saying, y'all, it ain't no way to beat the devil when we acting like him. There's no way to beat the devil when we got the same DNA that he got. When we respond to stuff the same way he responds to stuff. It ain't no way to beat him when we him. You can't conquer the devil acting like the devil. You can't. Thank you. I was wanted to. <laughs> but I know we lost on time. I'm just being real. You can't act like the devil and defeat the devil. You can't have a devil membership. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Try to get rid of you. I know they told you you could cancel your subscription at Planet Fitness, but try to do it and see what happens. <laughs> they ain't playing with you. <laughs> I promise you, you come up, I want to cancel my, okay, think it's that easy. Oh, it's 30 day guarantee back, okay, okay whatever. You can't, you can't get Satan's card and then think we're just gonna go in the next day and go, yo, I'm done, I'm, here go your, take your card back. If I could just get married, <laughs> the devil is a lie. If I could just be in a relationship, my whole life would be. You better do that soul work, especially if you get married. You, oh, I see, yeah, uh -huh. Do it all, get it all done. Get all, I'm talking about all of it. Get, get, do it all. But I promise you, you ain't gonna beat the devil if you, ain't, if you don't do the soul work. So let's, let's go over the soul work real quick. Here, here, so here go five things for the soul work. This is what I had to do. And I'm going to start with my hardest one, which was rage. It just kept popping up, bro. I, I, it was crazy. It just kept popping up. And more specifically, my, my wife was like, you know, she, you know, I can't, you just argue. For, I'm just like, oh, God, I'm, I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, God, can I get credit for it? He's like, no, you got to let go of the rage. Because when you get on the other side of the rage, I got some stuff for you. So I had to humble myself. So the first thing you have to do is you have to humble yourself. What does that mean? You have to release the ego and the pride and be honest. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't really understanding when she was saying it. 
But I did understand it the five, six times I jumped off on the police. I did understand it. I did, because when I got back in the car, Dave, I was like, yo, they could have took you out. So every time I watched TV and somebody got, like, every time you watch TV and somebody gets shot, they jump out, they fuck. I was like, yo, I did that. And the way the cop was saying, they defended themselves, they were scared. I was like, I did the same thing. And they never shot me. That was the grace of God. For real, you, I know, you watch me, you think I'm playing. I'm not, I'm talking about jumping out, jumping out. <laughs> I'm talking about going toward them jumping out. Like, bro, I don't know who you think I am. But, bro, don't talk to me like that. You don't, I'm a grown man. You can't tell me I can't. I'm thinking about my daughter right now. I'm like, God, I got to pray. She didn't got some of that. <laughs> she got that thing. <laughs> she didn't got that from me. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, I promise you. Like, I want y'all to hear this. I'm just like, God was like, come on, you got to confess. You got it. And I was like, yep, I do. He said, let's go back as far as we can go back. Where'd you get it from? Where do, you re where do you remember the first time having that much rage? Yeah, go get it. I was like, ooh, my father who raised me. Ooh, I remember now. Yeah, I remember. I remember me wanting to do something, and my mom is saying, boom, 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 and then she go get my father on me, and my man disciplined me. Yeah, I, I remember now. I remember. He said, that's good, good. Let's go back even further. Let's try to go back before you can remember. Let's go back. I said, all right, let's go back, God. We want to take me where you want to go. He said, just relax, just think. I was like, oh, I got it. When me and my mom was on our own single parent, and then she got married without my permission. Got it. She wanted her husband to be my father. I didn't want him to be my father. I just wanted my mom. Because it was just always me and my mom. Got it. He said, and son, so what happened, son, you, you was a kid. So the devil always want to get us when we kids because we don't know. And when you don't know, he can come in and you don't know that he in. And if you don't know he in, he could just be in and you just think that's your character. But it's really not your character. It's a demon living inside you. That is not your, it's not, that's not who you are. That's not your character. That's the devil and the reason why you know it's the devil is because he always creates the same scenario that make you act like that. So I was like, all right, I got it. Cool. All right. What do we do now? I went downstairs in the basement and put the word rage. Put the definition. And I said, God, help. He said, okay, son, it's a spirit. So the only way you can get rid of the spirit, since it's a spirit, you have to fight it in the spirit. You need to go get baptized. Because you got baptized, but you didn't know you had this spirit when you got baptized. So you never released this spirit. You only released the ones you knew of. Now you got to go let this one go. So the first one is you have soul work. You have to humble yourself, release the ego and the pride first. Number two, be honest with yourself and be honest with God. For real, you don't got to, you know, sometimes we, when it comes to humans, we be like, oh, I ain't on that. Well, I don't do that. Well, that ain't, just stop, stop. Listen to me, I'm being real, and I know this is going to be hard for some of us. But whatever human you love the most, you will not be with them on the day of judgment. You don't owe them nothing, they don't owe you nothing. You're going to be standing before God. If it's somebody you want to impress or please, it has to be the maker. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You, you already have lost your spouse. Y'all was in a good relationship. You, your, your spouse died. You already know what it's like not to be in that space no more. It, it, when it come down to it, I don't care how long y'all live, somebody going first and they, gotta, they, they don't get to bring you into jail. Well, he did this and she did this. Hold on, God, I want to go back in the flesh world and grab my husband and have him standing right here because he the one made me. She the one made me. That's why I did the... Can I go get my father real quick? And because he, because had he been there, I wouldn't. So I want to go get him because some of the stuff you said about me is him. He said, "Help." Hey, it's just. It, it. So, so number one, you got to humble yourself. I, I had to humble myself. I had to go get baptized. As the pastor, I got baptized in front of my congregation. I had to humble myself and tell my congregation what I was dealing with. 
And my wife was like, you getting baptized? I was like, yep. She's like, I'm getting baptized with you. Now, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that I'm ready to get translated rage, but I even see some stuff that happened now. And I promise you, I'm, I'm chill now. I don't, I'm quiet. Like, I'm like, nope, I'm not even going there. I'm not going there. You're Satan, you're not about to pull me back into that. And I'm telling you, I see doors that have opened for me getting on the other side. Who in the room, you got something you need to get on the other side? Come on, just let me. All right, don't leave me out here by myself. All right, we're going to race through these three, and I'm going to let you get out of here. Expose yourself. Tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to God, yourself. And if God tells you to tell somebody else, cool, but don't even look to tell nobody else. You and God first. Now, when you're talking to God, he going to tell you if you need to go tell somebody. But don't you just go say nothing to nobody. Like, you don't got to do that. You wait for him to tell you if he wants you to go tell somebody or not. David said, against thee and thee only have I sinned. He wasn't saying I did, Uriah didn't do him wrong. I didn't do his wife wrong. I didn't, my son died. He didn't say that. But he said, God, you the one that's going to judge me. And based on our relationship, I let you down. And so you, you got to expose yourself. Okay, God, I see where the rage came from. Help. Shh. And I'm telling you, 95% of the time, the demons that got introduced to us, it wasn't even us intentionally allowing them to introduce themselves to us. For most of us, it happened in childhood. You got exposed to something in childhood. Somebody said something, somebody did something, somebody made a decision in your childhood. It ain't even your fault, but it is your fault if you don't bring it to God and you don't deal with it. It's your fault. What are you holding on to it for? This is why I say you got to do the soul work. Listen to me before we get out of here. This is why you got to do the soul work. Because when you don't do the soul work, you keep attracting the same souls. So now you got money attracting them. So you got way more of them coming in your life. Now you got a degree. You got some power. You got way more of those type of people coming in your life. The only way to get rid of reverse is soul work because soul work is the only thing that closes the gap between you and the dark side. Okay, one more time, because I didn't like that response. That was like, like ignorance, like you didn't, know what it, you didn't understand the words that were coming out of my mouth. Listen to me. The only way to close the gap between our relationship with Satan and his imps is to do the soul work. The soul work is closing the door and sealing it on him. Any other work, he's still allowed to come in. Your health, he can come in. You, you got 2% body fat, he can still come in. You a multi-millionaire, billionaire, he can still come in. He can still get in. You a business out, out of this, he can still come in. You got degrees, he can still come in. The only way Satan can't come in your life anymore is soul work. That's it. And you know when you're doing the soul work or when you're not doing it, because the same thing keep coming. What does that mean? He got the code. You got to change the code. You can't keep responding the same way. We got to change the code. The only way to change the code is soul work. Because if you keep responding the way you always respond, it means that you're still the same. The last one, except God's exhortation and his correction. Whatever he say, do, do it. Don't, don't fight it. Whatever he says, do, do it. Don't go, God, why I got to take that? Why, I'm, why are you trying to hold? Why are you limiting me? <laughs> He's like, I'm not limiting you. I'm limiting your access to the, the enemy's access to you. So I know you're grown, but you need to stop watching TV because that's the avenue that the devil is coming. You need to stop listening to that music because that's the avenue in which the devil's coming. You need to stop talking to those people because that's the, but that's my friend. <laughs> I can't not talk to my friend. Your, that friend is the avenue where the Satan comes in. It's that friend the devil gets in and then come to your house. What you thought he just came to your house? On, hey, I'm the devil. I'm coming in. No, he can't do your bestie. Because every time she come in, she talking about your marriage in a way that's ungodly. She's talking about your business in a way that's ungodly. She's talking about you in a way that's ungodly. The conversation itself ain't holy. So it's only a matter of time before it. The last one, remain faithful to the game plan. The only play God has ever called for you. Whatever you do, stay with the 
whatever God's plan, stick with the plan. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Somebody, some, somebody wants to go forward, and so they need to do the soul work. And the soul work is hard to do. It's easy to make excuses. It's easy to blame other people for why we keep letting the devil. It's easy, Father, but we want, we want to do the soul work. Not that we really want to do the soul work, but we have to do the soul work if we're going to go forward. Because if we don't do the soul work, then the devil is always going to be connected to us in the flesh. And so we're ready to do the soul work. And we need your help doing the soul work. We don't want to go fleshly in reverse. We want to go spiritually in reverse so that we can seal the doors and the windows and all the ways the devil has been getting in all these years. Because every time you move us forward, the devil pushes those buttons to put us in reverse. And so it's not that it's not a reverse option on our gearship. It is. And you're not going to take that away from us for you giving us free will. But Lord, we would just pray that it would only be used in the way you want it to be used. We don't want the devil to have access to it anymore. Forgive us for our sins and our trespasses, for they are many. Bless our families and our friends. Lord, use us how you see fit. And we will be so careful as you give us the harvest and the overflow, not to take the credit, but let everybody know that it was Jesus that has wrought these wonderful things. In Jesus' name, let the believers say amen, amen. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you Saturday at 11 for Sabbath service. For all of our announcements, upcoming events, and special programming, please visit our social media pages on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Your tangible support of this ministry makes all the difference in the world, and we can't thank you enough for your commitment. If you'd like to support this ministry, please use our cash app at dollar sign APOC Global. If you would prefer a more traditional approach, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org. On behalf of pastors Thomas and Tyus, their wives and families, and the whole of your A Place of Change ministry family, until we meet again, be blessed.